So, so good morning. I'm Tony Fink, and I'm our scripture reader today. Please join me in our prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. So let's listen to the word of the Lord. Jesus and his followers came into Jericho. As Jesus was leaving Jericho, together with his disciples and a sizable crowd, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, Timaeus' son, was sitting beside the road. When he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was there, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, show me mercy. Many scolded him, telling him to be quiet. But he shouted even louder, son of David, show me mercy. Jesus stopped and said, call him forward. They called the blind man, be encouraged, get up, he's calling you. Throwing his coat to the side, he jumped up and came to Jesus. Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said, teacher, I want to see. Jesus said, go, your faith has healed you. At once, he was able to see, and he began to follow Jesus on the way. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Microphone on? It is. Thank you. So try to put yourself in the scene here, okay? Jesus and his disciples are on their way from Galilee to Jerusalem. So they're coming down and they're kind of taking a, what is that, a left-hand turn at Jericho and then going up the mountain path to Jerusalem, okay? Now this is Jesus' final journey to Jerusalem, but the disciples are not picking that up. Okay, even though Jesus keeps on predicting his passion to them, he just finished doing it just a couple of verses ago. He keeps on predicting his passion, his upcoming death. The disciples, they're just not getting it. So their journey takes them through Jericho, the oldest city in the world. Okay, and here's a picture of the fountain of Elisha. And I don't know if you can see it across, but in the mosaic tiles, it says the oldest city of the world. So that's the Jericho is literally the oldest city of the world because there was a fountain there, and that's where, the, where they began, okay? So, as Jesus and his companions are, are traveling through Jericho and going out of it, there's this blind man who learns that it's Jesus of Nazareth who's walking with this crowd. So we hear, when he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was there, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, show me mercy. Many scolded him, telling him to be quiet. But he shouted even louder, Son of David, have mer show me mercy. And Jesus stopped and said, call him forward. And you just know that something good is going to happen here, right? Yeah? We hear today's lesson as we finish with the final verses of the 10th chapter of Mark, okay? In recent weeks, we have heard some lessons from Jesus. Like we've learned that to be citizens of God's kingdom, we need to enter it with a childlike trust, having faith that it's not us who earn God's love, right? But grace is all about God and what God does for us. Remember that first Sunday of the month? The baptism? Yeah. We've also learned that to obtain eternal life, it goes beyond doing just the right things. It depends on having a deep, personal, re um, redeeming relationship with God. And we've also learned that the key to being great in God's kingdom is not by showing off or ordering others around, but it's by serving others. And this morning, we move from just learning lessons the lessons that Jesus is teaching, to seeing God's love in action and its results. Jesus stopped and said, 
call them forward. They called the blind man. Be encouraged. Get up. He's calling you. Throwing his coat by the side, he jumped up and came to Jesus. Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said, teacher, I want to see. Now, again, I want you to put yourself in the scene here, okay? Use your imagination. This blind man has just jumped up and ran to Jesus. Can you imagine a blind man running to Jesus? We heard that voice, okay? Try to pitch that in your mind, that action. And then try to think about what emotions this blind man might be feeling. I don't know, might it be expectation? Or maybe hope? Maybe some excitement? Could it be anxiety? What's he feeling inside? And Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said, Teacher, I want to see. And now, I want you to put yourself in front of Jesus. Okay? It's just you and Jesus. The, the disciples in the crowd, they, they just kind of disappear into the background. And you're standing right in front of Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? What is your request? Hmm? What do you long for? When Jesus says, what do you want me to do for you? And what might hinder your request? We hear Throwing his coat to the side, he jumped up and came to Jesus. You know, there's an interesting detail that I learned just last week, okay? Sometimes I remember things from seminary, maybe, okay? Sometimes I learn things each week, okay? You see, I learned that the cloak of Bartimaeus was not just some jacket. See, he was wearing a beggar's cloak, Okay? It, it kept him warm. And, and when it laid upon his lap or in front of him on the ground, it, it caught the coins that were tossed his way. Okay? And it was also, most likely, the mat that he slept on at night. And also the thing that wrapped around him as a blanket to keep him warm. Because do beggars live in mansions? No. So he had this beggar's cloak that was all these things to him. Oh, and his beggar's cloak, it also identified him as a beggar and a blind beggar at that. Do you remember that back in Jesus' day, it was understood, accepted as fact, that if someone was blind, it was because God was punishing them for something, okay? God was punishing them for some sin that they had committed, known or unknown. So, when Bartimaeus throws his coat to the side, it's not just some random piece of clothing here. It's the thing, perhaps the one thing that keeps him warm warm during the day and, and provides him some comfort at night and catches the donations and the alms that, that others just kind of throw his way, not wanting to get too close. And this cloak, this cloak of Bartimaeus, it's also his identity. Okay? It's who he is, a blind beggar. And it's also the baggage that this identity, as a beggar who was blind, carries with it. And what did Bartimaeus do? What did he do? Threw it aside and jumped up. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus says? What is your request? What is 
the thing you long for? And what might hinder your request? What, what baggage or, or identity or burden do you carry that you need to set aside to be healed by Jesus? What is it for you? Jesus stopped and, and said, call him forward. They called the blind man, be encouraged, get up, he's calling for you. Throwing his coat to the side, he jumped up and came to Jesus. Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said, teacher, I want to see. And Jesus said, go, your faith has healed you. And at once he was able to see. And he began to follow Jesus on the way. So in the story, Bartimaeus threw aside what hindered him, jumped up toward Jesus, and was healed not just by the touch of Jesus. And, and think about this. Did Jesus even touch him? I don't even see it in there, okay? But not just healed by Jesus, but also healed through his faith in what Jesus offered. Oh, another detail here. What was the name of that blind beggar in Jericho? Oh, a little bit louder. Bartimaeus. Do you find it interesting that we still know this guy's name 2,000 years later? Think about it. That's not a small detail. And perhaps that's because that this encounter on the road going through Jericho was not the end of his story. Since Mark, in his writing, calls Bartimaeus by name, I'm guessing that the first readers of the gospel, in the earliest days of the church, they knew Bartimaeus. Or at least they heard about Bartimaeus from others. Oh, Bartimaeus, yeah, he's the guy that used to sit over there. Okay? They knew who he was. So the question is, why might have he been known by those in the church? Well, we got it right here. And he began to follow Jesus on the way. Thinking back to the story, wait, wait here. Does Jesus tell this healed man to follow him? Look back, and he doesn't. We don't hear this invitation in Matthew or Mark or Luke. Okay? But guess what? In Matthew and in Mark and in Luke, this recently healed man in all three stories follows Jesus. And I think it's interesting that in our lesson two weeks ago, the man to whom Jesus said, and come, follow me, he didn't. Let me refresh the story for you, okay? In the middle of the story we hear, Jesus looked at him carefully and loved him. He said, you are lacking one thing. Go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor. Then you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. But the man was dismayed at this statement and went away saddened because he had many possessions. Now, I don't think that we remember that man's name. I don't think we got his name. This guy with, with many possessions, probably someone who everybody in town knew. This guy who we know kept all the commandments since he was a young boy because he just had told Jesus, I've kept these since I was a boy. Okay? We don't know that guy's name, but we do know that blind beggar's name. Oh, what was his name again? Bartimaeus. Huh. And can you imagine that after Bartimaeus was given his sight, Bartimaeus began echoing those words from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will pray, my, his praise will always be in my mouth. I praise the Lord. Let, let the suffering listen and rejoice. 
Magnify the Lord with me. Together let us lift his name on high. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to God will shine. Their faces are never afraid, ashamed. Imagine Bartimaeus just dancing these words as he went along the road. Bartimaeus followed Jesus out of joy. And he followed Jesus with joy. He was filled with joy because he saw and he had experienced God's love in action. How about you? Where have you seen God's love in action? Where have you experienced God's love in action? Hmm? Oh, happens to be a hymn on the wall. Imagine that. Oh, for the wonderful love he has promised, promised for you and for me. Though he, we have sinned, he has mercy and pardon. Pardon for you and for me. Come home. Come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, O sinner, what? Come home. So come home. Come near. And hear Jesus asking you, what do you want me to do for you? It's just you and Jesus. The disciples and the crowd, they, they just kind of vanish into the background. What do you want me to do for you, he says. What's your request? What do you long for? What might hinder your request? Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said, Teacher, I want to see. Jesus said, Go. Your faith has healed you. And at once he was able to see. And he began to follow Jesus on the way. So friends, Jesus is calling. Let's sing the song.